Namaste. Welcome everyone. My name is Todd Norian and I'm the founder of Ashaya Yoga and I'm delighted to bring you this class called Cultivating Calm in the Chaos, which of course is a great thing to have anytime, but especially now. Seems like things just um, just never quite settled down, you know, right when I thought, okay, COVID's getting better, then we have all this other stuff happening in the news. So I think I think chaos is here to stay, basically. But it doesn't mean that we can't still find the calm. And that's really what yoga has the potential to bring. Yoga is a beautiful, I call it an art form, that helps us learn how to use the body and the breath and all the tools of our consciousness to access a deeper part of ourselves. So I like to think of everything happening in waves. So if you think of the ocean on the surface, are the waves and if we just stay on the surface of life we tend to be thrown thrown around like buoys on the surface and um, the bigger the waves the higher up we go and the higher down we go and then there's the depth of the ocean of consciousness and it's like deep deep down everything starts to slow down there's a deep calm and life is like that the calm is underneath and the real trick with yoga is then how to recognize that the ocean is in the wave. And if you think of ocean as this vast spirit that connects everything together, then we can see that the wave is made up of the ocean. But when we forget that we're connected to a bigger energy, we walk around as oceanless waves. And that is part of the problem, that we get stuck in the chaos and then we separate ourselves off from this vastness of consciousness, which has as its essence freedom, that has as its essence this feeling of a deep connection where there's real meaning in life, where there's fulfillment, where there's a sense of joy that is not filled with the burden of holding it all and trying to hold it all together. Let alone what we do sometimes to our experience is then we we judge ourselves for it or we judge other people. And although our life can be wavy, what we do is we add on to that by having these unrealistic expectations of ourselves, or we can be really hard on ourselves. Life is hard enough. We don't need to be harder on ourselves. But, you know, we have a lot of these sort of patterns of how we relate to and how we interact with the, calm, with the waves of life that and the chaos of life that actually brings us more into a chaotic state. So instead of learning how to surf the waves of life, because we realize we're not ultimately in control of these waves, but we can learn how to surf them and traverse them in a more skillful way. And that's what yoga helps us do. And then we want to start to recognize that the ocean is in the wave, that we're actually composed of this vastness, that the stillness, the calm, and the freedom inside that we so deeply desire is already there inside of us. It's just a matter of learning how to access it. I was thinking that, you know, since, you know, the last two years or so, like when COVID first started, um, I, I, my business was like I would travel and teach and I would show up live and teach a workshop and everything canceled. Like my whole year was canceled. Like I was out of a job and I had to shift. My life became very chaotic as was the life of so many people, so many changes, you know, let alone the loss and all that. And what happened was is that I shifted my entire perspective and my entire, entire business to go online. And it's been so wonderful because all these benefits started to happen. Fun suddenly I had students from all over the globe tuning in to take classes with me and that had never really happened before. So there's always a silver lining. But what really is needed in this idea of how do we find the calm and the chaos is a feeling of steadfastness. We need to learn how to become steadfast. And, you know, I experimented and failed miserably for several weeks, maybe even a few months, trying to figure out 
how to teach online. I'm not the youngest person. So like learning the technology is, you know, teaching a dinosaur an old trick. Um, but I actually, I stuck with it. And it's through uh, steadfastness that I stayed with it that helped me learn how to do it. And now it just feels like it's, you know, fairly easy to do and fairly normal. And it reminds me of, you know, like if we want to accomplish anything of lasting value, it takes steadfastness. Same is true for calmness. If you want to learn how to live and, and reconnect with that calmness, it takes a certain skill. It takes some steadfastness uh, to not give up too soon. So we're going to go through a series of poses and we'll do some breathing. We'll do a little bit of meditation and hopefully you'll be able to tap into the calm ocean of consciousness underneath the surface and actually recognize that in the chaos, in the ups and downs is where the true calm is hidden. So take a comfortable seat. And if you have a way to elevate your hips, just sit up on a couple of blankets. When your hips are elevated, it tips the pelvis in such a way that makes it more comfortable to sit. It gives you a low back curve, which is very important. And then take hold of your thighs. And if you're sitting cross-legged or if you're sitting in a chair, you can do this too, is you hold your thighs and you manually turn your thigh bones inwardly and widen out the sitting bones. You can do both sides. So you get underneath and pull the sitting bones wider apart to broaden your base. Good. Then check to see that you have a low back curve. So you can put your hand back there. And if you feel your the spinous, spinal processes going in, you'll have like a little trench in your low back compared to having the dinosaur spine sticking out. So we want to pull those in. That creates the curve. And then pull your tailbone down and observe how your low belly will pull in and up slightly. Good. And sit comfortably. Now I like to touch my index fingers and thumbs. This is a, a yogic position of the hands. It's called a mudra, which basically means a form or a particular kind of seal. And what it seals or what it represents, it's a symbol that represents our individual nature and our universal nature. So thumbs are like the universal nature and our index finger is our individual nature. Uh, the limited part of ourselves touches the unlimited. And you could think of it this way too, is that the wave touches the ocean and then palms down so we embody that. And then close your eyes if you can. Take a couple of deeper breaths. And when you inhale, open to the bigger energy. That there is a spirit, you could say. This universal presence that's there. And as you open to it, expand from the inside out. And lengthen the sides of your torso and your ribs all the way up. And then take the top of your shoulders back. Hug your shoulder blades a little bit more firmly now onto your back, onto the back of the heart. And then as you inhale, lift up through your throat and take your palate back. That's the center of the roof of the mouth. And lift the back of your skull up. Our goal here is to align the head over the heart and align the heart over the pelvis. So see if you can align your palate over your pelvis. So you move your head back a little bit, lift your front, lift your heart a little bit more. And then with each exhalation, let your hips get heavy. Each exhalation, let go of any stress, any anxiety, and as you inhale, lift your heart, take your shoulders back and open to the bigger energy. You can think of this as opening to the light or opening to spirit. Just allow your breath to flow in and out. Notice the wave-like motion of your breath. When you inhale, 
Allow your belly to expand. And as you exhale, it contracts. Imagine that your thoughts were like waves of the ocean. And we don't want to stop the waves. Of course, we're not able to stop the waves. But just let the breath flow in and out and allow your thoughts to flow as well without needing to stop them. Just observe your thoughts. And then breathe into your heart and allow your thoughts to ride on the current of your breath into your heart. And there, set your intention for your practice today. And I always ask myself, what does my heart most deeply desire? And take a moment and reflect and think, what do you desire? What do you wish to create? What would you like to receive? Perhaps today we, we wish for a little more calm, to be able to release stress, anxiety, and return home to our heart. Then bring your palms together in front of your heart. This is a mudra also. It's called the Anjali Mudra, which means to make an offering. It also means to receive an offering. And to prepare ourselves for our practice, we place our heart in front of our heart. And we'll bring our energies together by chanting the sound of Om. And Om is the sound of all sounds. It's the seed sound where all other vibrations and sounds originate from. It has a kind of cosmic value because when you chant it, it brings you in touch with the vastness of the ocean of consciousness. It's kind of like a doorway that we walk through to step into a realm of stillness and peace. So I invite you to chant with me. We'll chant it once and then kind of dwell in the wake of the chant at the end after the chant stops and let yourself be pulled by the energy of the chant deeper into your heart. And when you're in your heart and I'm in my heart, we are one. Take a deep breath in and we'll chant Om together. Oh. Into the ocean of consciousness deep in your own heart, gently bow your head. When you're ready, open your eyes. Namaste. Welcome back. Let's start. Come on up to standing and I will join you at the top of your mat. ask you to find a block if you have one. Um, let me show you what it looks like here. I'm just going to zoom in a tiny bit more. Okay, so if you have a block, something that looks something like this, um, you could use anything else like a book or a, um, a, a Tupperware, something like that with the lid on it, you know. Um, so try to find something like this. And then we're going to put it right between the upper inner thighs. And you come stand with your feet parallel, hip distance apart. And I like to joke around and, and say that we are a human Pez dispenser. And this is the Pez. So squeeze the Pez. And like I said before, it takes steadfastness to find 
the way through the chaos into the calm. So with steadfastness, hug the block. And when you squeeze the block with your legs, what happens is all the muscles start to hug onto the bones and it creates a sense of safety and strength in the joints. Lift and spread your toes as well. And just that action of lifting your toes will lift the arches of your feet. And some people have either lazy arches or fallen arches like that. Well, lift your toes and suddenly the muscles of the shins engage and the bottoms of the feet will lift. And when the arches of the feet lift up, the pelvic floor also tones, which is a very good thing. And it supports the spine. Even the diaphragm engages. There's all these different diaphragms through the body, abdominal diaphragm. Then there's one at the base of the throat, one in the upper palate. So the yogis know that these, these diaphragms are really what helps us to find the sense of deep inner calm inside. So lift your toes, squeeze the block with steadfastness, hands to your hips. Now, as you squeeze in, take the block back. So you move your pes back. And as your thigh bones go back, you'll notice that you get a low back curve, just like we did when we were sitting. So this curve really helps to align the spine. If you have low back pain, or if you have a flat back, you, your discs may actually start to hurt or push back. So by taking your thighs back this way, you create the curve. It uh, releases tension in the spine and then pull your tailbone down while keeping your thighs back. So thighs go back, we get a curve, pull your tailbone in, low belly in and up, and then you lengthen the curve. Bring your palms in front. Inhale, sweep your arms out to the side and lift. And exhale, release your arms. So try to maintain all these actions. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down, and coordinate your arm movements with the flow of your breath. And let the breath lead and the movement follow. So inhale, then move your arms. Exhale, turn your palms down. Bring your arms down in front of the heart like this. And continue. Squeeze the block. Keep your toes up. And continue. Enjoy your breath. So breath is the same as life. It gives you energy. It also helps to bring you inside to find and tap into that place of calmness. I always say that anxiety and oxygen cannot coexist. So breathe and the anxiety just starts to dissipate. And then move in the wake of your breath. Breath is also like grace. It's like the spirit, the bigger energy. So we want to let grace lead and you follow. A couple more. And when you inhale at the very top of your breath, your arms will be all the way stretched up. And then exhale, Move your arms in the wake of the breath. At the bottom of your breath, the palms come in front. So everything is really well coordinated. Awesome. Okay, remove the block. So remember that, thighs back, tailbone in. We get curve and length in the spine. Come to the front of your mat now, and feet parallel, inhale, Stretch up just like we did, only this time fold halfway forward, bend your knees a bit, and if you have tight hamstrings, what you can do is get a block, and you're gonna to touch the block this way. You could also get a chair, or you could go to the wall, touch the wall. We're gonna do a block like this. And then for those that may not need a block, you come down and do what I call eagle talons. So just the fingers, or on the floor this way. And you make little arches with your hands. Okay, exhale, bow into the calm, deep below the surface of the waves. And then inhale, lift your heart halfway up. Exhale and bow. Let your breath usher in sort of like the tides so that your body flows like a wave on the ocean. And we remember 
that the ocean is in the wave. Okay, don't be an oceanless wave. <laughs> so we remember that we are infused with breath. We're infused with the spirit and the calm is really hidden in the chaos. And what really helps is that if you don't resist the chaos, you'll get to the calm a lot quicker. So just let yourself flow. Exhale, bow, and then place your hands, step back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, which is downward facing dog pose. And bring your knees down to the floor. Just check your hands first. And get your wrist creases to point parallel to the short edge of your mat. Fingers are wide. And then claw your pads and roots. The pads are the underneath the nails of your fingers. So the finger pads under the nails. And the roots of the fingers are where the finger joins the hand. So claw and press pads and roots. And then pull your palms toward each other so your muscles engage, but keep the back of your heart soft. Pull up from your hands to your heart. Walk your knees back a few inches. Keep your knees down and just stretch back so you get a big stretch underneath your arms. And then pull from your hands into your heart and lift your armpits up and what happens is when your arm bones go back, your shoulder blades have to engage. So with steadfastness, hug your shoulder blades on your back. Heart is soft. Breathe. Pull your palms backwards isometrically. Remember that it takes steadfastness to actually accomplish anything of lasting value. So we build steadfastness in the body. Lift your armpits up. Good. Now lift your knees and alternately press one heel down and then the other. So you pedal your feet in place like you're on a paddle boat and bend the opposite knee and stretch the opposite heel toward the floor. Now, as you do this, when you press your heel down, turn your foot out a little bit and hold. So let's say if you bend your left knee, the right heel turn, the right foot turns out a bit, about 45 degrees, and then you press the heel down and then do that on the opposite side. And go back and forth. And it just creates a little bit bigger of a stretch there in your legs. And then bend both knees a lot, turn your thighs in, try to create a low back curve. So lift your sitting bones way up to the sky, bend your knees, lift your sitting bones more, then tailbone in and breathe. Are you getting tired yet? <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're gonna hold for just 20 more minutes, You're kidding. All right, hold, come on, steadfastness, build it. Lift your armpits up, melt the heart. And then from your heart, push down into your hands and from your heart, root your heels toward the floor. Excellent. Look forward and then exhale, lunge your right foot forward. Okay, now if that is challenging, if you have two blocks or two books, then look, you can put your hands down on the blocks. And this is going to make some more room for your hips if your hips are, are tight. It'll just make everything so much easier. So please find some blocks or some books so you can support yourself. Otherwise, you're on eagle talons. And then lift your left knee off the floor and push from your pelvis through your left heel and from your pelvis press through your right shin. Now lean onto your left hand, right hand on the right leg and twist to the right. And we're going to go all the way up with the right arm. You can come down onto your left palm. And breathe, stretch, arch back a little bit, take your right arm back even more. And then exhale, come back to center. And then 
either with your blocks or without, walk your hands back and stretch your right leg straight. So this is a really awesome hamstring stretch. And if you don't need blocks, then come on to Eagle Talons here. Root your right heel down and isometrically drag it backwards. Pull your tailbone in, lightly bow, and then exhale. Bend your knee so your right foot comes down, and then go back and forth. So straight right leg, root your heel, and then bend. And just go back and forth a few times. When you bring the leg straight, exhale and bow. Inhale, bend. Exhale, bow. Inhale, bend. Last one, hold. And then come up, twist to the right, bring your left hand to the outside of the right foot. Spread your toes, especially the right little toe spreads wide. And breathe. Lots of huge stretching now, right through this leg. Hug in with steadfastness. Hang in there and breathe. Inhale, come back to center. Bend your right knee, right foot flat on the floor. And then step back into downward dog pose. Breathe, bend both knees, lift your sitting bones higher, get a low back curve. And then lift your armpits up. The higher your armpits go, the more connected and the more strength you have in your shoulder blades. And that's gonna allow you to calmly melt the heart. So the back of the heart melts while your arm bones stay steadfast. Exhale. Look forward, stretch your left foot forward. And bring your right knee down to the floor for a moment. Remember, you can use blocks under your hands as needed. And breathe. Very good. Now lift your right knee off the floor. Lean onto your right hand. Left hand comes to the left knee. Twist, take your left shoulder back. And then if you can, stretch your left arm up, arch back a little bit more. Deepen your breath. Very good. And exhale, release. Bring your right knee down to the floor. And then walk your hands back until your left leg is straight. Root the left heel, isometrically drag the foot backwards and spread your toes, especially the left fifth toe widens. Bow. And then we're gonna go back and forth a few times. Bend the left knee, walk your hands back, legs straight, and bend, and straighten, and bend. This really works the hamstring muscles, which for most people is really tight. Remember, if this is like very difficult to do, if you just place your hands up on some blocks or books, much easier. Exhale and hold, root the heel down, pull it back isometrically. Then pull your tailbone in, draw your navel back and bow. Breathe. I always like to say, enjoy your suffering <laughs> because the hamstrings are so tight. So try not to force it. Um, if you experience mild, tolerable discomfort, that's a good pain. It's like, what is the good pain? So mild, tolerable, but uncomfortable is good. Sharp pain is not good at all. So you have to Monitor that for yourself, bow. And then inhale, come up, twist to the left, bring your right hand to the outside of the shin. Bow again, easy does it, and breathe. Excellent. Release, bend the knee, step back, plank. 
Take your thigh bones back, tailbone in. So if you can hold yourself up. If you can't, boom, your knees are gonna go down. So knees down is the modification. It's still hard, you still have to hold yourself up. But if you want more workout, then the knees go back. Slowly now bend your elbows and pause halfway down. Keep the shoulders back, head of the arm bones back. Also knees can be down, it's a little bit easier. This is called Chaturanga Dandasana pose. The four limb staff pose. And then exhale all the way down. Point your toes, hug your legs in toward the middle. And inhale, come up, lift your chest. Take your shoulders back and claw pads and roots in your hands. And isometrically pull the palms backwards. The hands get very strong. Steadfastness really helps you come to the place of calm. Head of the arm bones back, shoulder blades engage, and then expand your heart forward. Lift through your neck and your head, and then exhale. Come all the way down. Push back into downward facing dog pose. And then step by step, walk in, feet to hands. Root through your feet. Sweep your arms out to the side, come up with a straight spine, reach all the way up, and then exhale. Release your arms, palms in front. All right, clasp your hands behind. If you're not able to do a clasp, then what you can do is grab a belt. This is a yoga belt, but you could use a regular belt for your pants or a scarf, something like that and you can hold it like this between your hands. Just that little bit of space will open up your shoulders. And then if you don't need a belt, interlace, lift your side ribs, and then take the head of the arm bones back. Squeeze your elbows straighter. And this is a tremendous stretch for the front of the shoulders, front of the chest, and the heart. It's really, really good and it frees up your breath. Very good. Exhale, release. Now bend your elbows in what I call a cactus pose. Palms face the front. So elbows as high as your shoulders. Bring your elbows a little bit closer and then pull your armpits back. Widen the elbows to go as wide as the shoulders and then turn your lower arms in so it's like if you were inside of a door jam, your forearms push against the door, the frame of the door, and push out even as you pull your shoulder blades more on your back. So hug shoulder blades more on the back with steadfastness. At the same time, push your forearms out. Very good. Then palms toward the front, reach up a little bit, and like you're doing the lat pull down bar at the gym, pull down isometrically and really work your shoulders. Lift up again and pull down, elbows down a little bit. Inhale up and isometrically pull. Hug your shoulder blades firmly onto your back ribs. Yeah, steadfastness makes us strong. And we need that inner strength to be able to traverse the ups and downs of life and find the calm and the chaos. And then exhale, release, shake out your elbows and your wrists. Take a wide stance now. Make your feet parallel to each other, stretch your arms up and try to get your ankles as wide as your wrists are wide. Ankles under wrists. Okay, and if that's too difficult, like, Looks like you're just gonna fall over. Then bring your feet a little bit close together, it's fine. But typically for the um, next pose, we want the feet, the ankles to be as wide as the wrists are wide. Hands to hips. Keep your left foot square to the little toe, uh, the little edge of, short edge of your mat. Turn your right foot open to 90 degrees and squeeze your legs toward the middle. Your right heel bisects the center of the left foot Hug your legs and then bend the right knee. Bring your right forearm onto the thigh. Pause for a moment and breathe. Good. 
With steadfastness, hug your legs in toward the middle. I like to think of like the idea of scissoring the leg. So the back leg pulls forward, the front leg pulls back. And that makes the legs steadfast. And then thighs back. So to get your thighs back here, just like we did with the pez, lean your torso slightly toward the front and then move your thighs back. Then pull your tailbone in, keep your left thigh back. Bring your right arm out to the side in front, I'm uh, sorry, left arm, and then you pull your left armpit back and then stretch your arm overhead, turn your thumb up. Turn your heart more to the sky. Hold and breathe. From your pelvis now, root your feet, and from your pelvis, just stretch. Each inhalation, hug your muscles to the bones with steadfastness, just pull in. It's like stay steady in the storm, calm in the chaos. And every exhalation, radiate back out from your pelvis through the feet, and from your pelvis through your hand. Root down through your feet and inhale, come up, hands to hips. Turn your feet to center and breathe. This pose is called Parsva Konasana, the lateral angle pose. Parsva means turning or lateral and Kona is angle. Square your right foot to the back edge, short edge of your mat. Turn your left foot all the way open. Engage your legs to the middle and then bend your left knee. Bring your forearm on your thigh and your knee is directly above your ankle. If you can get your thigh bone more parallel to the floor, do that. You may have to widen your stance by about an inch. And of course, you want the center of the knee to line up with toe two and three. Hug your muscles, move your thigh bones back, tailbone in, and then take your right arm out to the side, pull your armpit back, then stretch your arm overhead. Pull in from your feet and from your fingers all the way into the hips. So you hug in with steadfastness and then from your pelvis radiate out. Turn your heart more and more up to the sky. Find your breath, invite your breath to flow a little bit more fully. And then root down through your feet. Inhale, come up. Hands to hips, turn your feet parallel and walk your feet back together. Now feet parallel, inhale, stretch your arms up and then exhale into this pose called Utkatasana, chair pose. Actually, Ut Utkata means fierce, so this is the fierce pose. So bend your knees, stick your butt way out, and imagine that you could sit back on the edge of a chair, or as I like to say, in an outhouse in the winter with a metal seat. So you don't touch, you don't wanna touch. Armpits back. Hug your shins toward the middle, lift your toes, but don't let your knees cave in. So this would be caved in knees. So you keep your knee, center of the knee, as wide as toe two and three. Your shins hug, but I want you to push your thigh bones apart. Then keeping your thighs back, pull your tailbone in, belly in, and hold, and your whole body's gonna heat up. Breathe. Lift your toes, your weight will shift back more towards your heels. Hold. You can do it, hang in there. And now root through your feet, inhale, come up. And exhale, fold forward from the hips and lightly touch the floor with your fingers. Release your head, your neck, your shoulders. Awesome. All right, bend your knees, come on down. Lie in your belly. Now, come on to your forearms. So first we do a little bit of, uh, a little back bend called the Sphinx Pose. 
Toes are straight back, hug your shins, and lift your heart. Shoulders go back, but the heart goes forward. To protect your spine, pull your tailbone in more, and the very lowest part of your belly will lift off the floor. Great. Okay, now curl your toes under. We're going to change it up. From here, lift your hips. So we're back in the plank position, but it's forearm plank. Pull your lower ribs back. Pull them in. Pull your navel back. Then take your thigh bones back, tailbone in. Heart is soft. And hold. Hold. Okay, if you're still with me here, lift your right toes an inch off the floor. Again, we're going to really work the core. Then right foot down. Can you lift your left toes? Pull your belly in. Pull your ribs in. And breathe. And then left toes down, hold. Okay, here's the last step. You can bring your knees down too, that makes it a little bit easier. Stir the pot. So you move your heart in a clockwise circle. Stir. Yep, keep your hips steady. Just move your heart. And then opposite direction. You'll feel it in your belly for sure. Counterclockwise. Come on, stay with it. Okay, exhale, come on down. Make a little pillow with your hands and turn your head to the side and rest. Mm. This really activates your core and it gets the heat to fire up in your body. It's really good for all of your abdominal organs for your circulation, for your breath, and it also a strong core supports your spine. Good. Okay. Bring your chin on the floor. Walk your hands off your mat at the level of your shoulders. Come up on ego talons so your elbows are really wide. Stretch your right foot back, left foot back. Hug your legs to the middle, pull your tail in, and then inhale. Come up into Cobra with the hands wide. With the elbows this wide, now you can lift the sides of your torso. And you get the head of your arm bones to go back further. You might be able to come up a little bit more. And then keeping the shoulder blades steadfast on the back, melt the heart forward. And breathe. Continue to move the shoulders back. The shoulder blades will flow down the back and you curl the bottom tips of the shoulder blades in towards the back of the heart, even while your heart lifts and lift your head above the shoulders more. And then exhale. Come on down. Clasp your hands behind your back. And then inhale come up, you can roll your shoulders up, lift your legs, squeeze to the middle, and hold. Squeeze your shoulder blades firmly on your back. Squeeze your legs together. Squeeze your hip muscles, buttock muscles are firm. Lift up. This is called Shalabhasana. It's a variation of the locust pose. And breathe. And then exhale. Come all the way down. Stretch your arms out in front. And then find your right arm and left leg. And then inhale and lift the right arm, thumb up, and the left leg. And hug both the arm and leg toward the midline. Isometrically. Exhale down. Inhale, left arm and right leg. Trace the diagonal line from your left hand all the way through your right foot. And then exhale down. Inhale, right arm, left leg. Trace the diagonal line. 
exhale down and try to find the place where these two diagonal lines cross will be just a little bit below the navel and focus on that point which is the core I call it the core of calmness alternately alternately go back and forth and this is very strengthening for the diagonals the you know if you were to divide up your spine into four quadrants so we're doing the upper and lower opposite quadrants and they affect each other like your right hip is related to your left shoulder and your left hip is related to your right shoulder so we want to tone them together to create more strength and exhale release place your hands under your shoulders push up and come onto your back have a belt nearby we'll use it in just a minute Lie on your back, bend your knees, feet flat on the floor, and then bend your elbows by your side ribs, palms parallel, fingers up. And then lengthen your side ribs, shoulders toward the floor, hug your shoulder blades under, and then press your feet and inhale, lift your hips up. And then with steadfastness, pull from your heels all the way up into the head, into the upper palate. Lift your hips, pull your shoulder blades into the back, lift your heart, but keep your chin lifted so your, your throat stays more open. And then inner rotate your thighs and pull your tailbone in, lift your hips higher. Now, from your palate, press the back of your head down into the earth and extend straight out through your knees. Try to grow your thigh bones. From your hips, push through your knees. And your legs are going towards your feet, but your heart's going towards your chin. And just focus on these two directions, which will make a tremendous feeling of space in the torso. Breathe, and then exhale, lower your hips, and rest. Great. Okay, for our last stretch, take your belt or your scarf and put it around your right foot. Stretch your right leg up. The belt goes just below the ball mounds of your feet. Hold each end of the belt with one hand. And move your right thigh away from you until you can get the low back off the floor. The tendency, as soon as we lie down on our back, is to flatten the back on the floor, and that's not good for the discs. So spread your toes, hug your muscles, and create a low back curve. Keep the curve, stretch your left leg all the way out, and down on the floor and take your left thigh all the way to the floor. Just imagine you had a big sandbag on the top of your left thigh and it goes, touch the floor with your hamstring. At the same time, pull on the bell. Keep the low back curve so there's no pressure on your spine. And then push your right thigh back into the back of your leg. The thigh pushes back into the hamstring but pull your shin toward you and then push out from your pelvis through both feet and you'll get a really awesome stretch through your right leg. Good. Now hold both ends of the belt with your right hand and bring your right leg slowly off to the right. And you can give yourself a little more space on the belt. Just uh, slide down the belt a bit if you need. If you want more stretch, just pull on the belt. And your left thigh will come up a little bit. You can stretch your right arm out to the right. And breathe. 
deep stretch for the inner thighs. And then inhale, right leg up, move the belt, and release. Stretch your right leg out so it's parallel with the left. Notice the difference. Notice how much longer the right leg feels. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Okay, let's make balance. Bend both knees, left foot in the belt, stretch up. Make the low back curve so your thigh goes back. You can even move your left leg back away from you to take pressure off so you can get, you should be able to place your, uh, slide your hand underneath your back. Then pull on the belt, keep the curve. Push your left thigh away from you. Pull your left shin toward you. Spread your toes. And then stretch your right leg all the way out and try to get your right thigh to push down onto the floor. Find where the most amount of stretch you can manage that is uh, tolerable, let's say. And just hold there and breathe. Pull the belt, push your left thigh back, and just hold the stretch with steadfastness, hug in. And in this stillness, you start to feel the inner strength that actually brings more of a sense of calm so you're not so easily swayed by the waves and the ups and downs of life. You stay anchored in your center. Hold both ends of the belt with your left hand and bring your left leg all the way out to the left. Right arm out to the right. Hold. Stretch even more. Breathe into your stretch. The breath helps to release tension. When the muscles are oxygenated, when the blood is oxygenated, it increases the supply of flexibility to the muscles. They warm up, there's a better flow of blood, of lymph, of prana, which is the life force energy. And then inhale slowly. Bring your left leg back up, remove the belt. And then hug both knees into your chest. Congratulate yourself for hanging in there and being steadfast. And then stretch both legs out on the floor. Bring your feet about oh, a foot to foot and a half apart, let the feet roll out. Bring your arms by your sides, a few inches out from your sides, palms up. Close your eyes. Take some deeper breaths now. With each exhalation, relax your muscles down into the floor. See if you can release your bones into the earth. Continue to let go. In each exhalation, see how much more you can release. Even let your organs descend to the backside of your body. Really give way to the flow of gravity. And now relax your feet, relax your ankles, Relax your calves and let your awareness comb through your body. Relax.
relax your knees, your thighs. Relax your hips and let the heavy bones of your hips descend deep into the earth. Relax your lower belly. And observe the wave-like motion in your belly with the breath. Allow your belly to rise and fall with each breath. Now relax your spine, relax your heart, let your shoulders release into the floor. Relax your arms, elbows, forearms, wrists. Palms. Relax your fingers. Relax your fingertips. Even relax the space between your fingers. Now release the root of your tongue. Relax your throat, your jaw. Begin now to relax your eyes. Let your eyes become soft and allow them to descend towards the back of the skull. And relax your forehead, the sides of the head, back of the head, top of the head. Relax your entire skull. And see if you can relax your brain. Allow the brain to soften and be surrounded by a calm fluid like a still pond. Now relax your entire body. And let yourself be in the depths of the ocean of consciousness far away from the waves, the ups and downs of life, and let yourself be pulled ever more deeply into the depths of peace, inner silence, and inner calm.
gently become aware in the midst of the depths of the ocean of consciousness. And let the imprint of calm enter into all of your cells. And then receive all the benefits of the practice in the form of your breath. And breathe in the benefits into all of the cells of your body all the way down to your fingers and toes. And then begin to move fingers and toes. And as you're ready, gently stretch your body, draw your knees in towards your chest, roll to the right side. And when you're ready, come on up to sitting Sit quietly for a moment. And like we did in the beginning, as you come to sitting, turn your thigh bones in. Join your index fingers and thumbs, palms down, eyes closed. And take a moment to reflect on how you feel and see if there's a little more calm. Let your breath be steady and slow face stays relaxed. Let yourself open to the bigger energy, to this ocean of peace, ocean of bliss, ocean of deep calm. Even as your breath flows like the waves on the surface, you maintain your anchor deep down in the depth of your own being. And then bring your palms together in front of your heart and thank yourself for giving yourself this time to practice and establish and cultivate more calm and calm in the chaos that you're able to remain centered no matter what comes your way. Let's let's express this gratitude and send a prayer for calm and a prayer for peace out into the world everywhere. And we'll chant one final om together. Om. The calm in me bows to the calm in you. Namaste. And thank you so much for practicing with me today. So grateful to the Find Center for this opportunity to share. And if you'd like to learn more about my approach to yoga, you can go to ashayayoga.com and join the Pillars of Peace, which is my monthly offering. And um, we give all newcomers a, a free unlimited week of classes. So if you'd like, please join.